to kind of start the show off with the host of the Beaver Nash Vegas radio show, George Hamilton V. That's you. What? That's you. That's right. That's me. How y'all doing today? We're good. We need Amy up here because we're getting ready to do a very, very special thing. It's great to be here during the winter wallop and see everybody out there with smiling faces. Did you have enough snow already? I did, yeah. Oh, no. Me too. But you know, what we do have in here is some really wonderful food from Chef Michelle and an anonymous duck call or two. <laughs> How about a hand for David Spawning Jr., who we also call a man of constant leisure. Put off for tomorrow. How about a hand for David Sawyer? Well, at this time, we'd like to start off the Deep Nash Vegas radio show in the traditional and primitive way with the wonderful Heavenly Choir. Come on up here, Heavenly Choir. How about a round of applause? <laughs> Are you ready, Heavenly Choir? I don't know. Hit the chord, we'll know. Right. <laughs> Okay, we're ready. <laughs> Radio! Radio! Camera, wait. This is live radio. Okay, we here we go. <laughs> we want to make sure that friends watching us all around the world can enjoy this, just the same as people here at Kimbrough's Cafe, beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Heavenly Choir, are you ready with a little feedback? Yes, sir. <laughs> here we go. To start the show off in the traditional and primitive way. <laughs> Cafe in a wonderful Williamson County and beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Can you say Viva Nash Vegas? Viva Nash Vegas! So much fun. Yes, it is. Well, we got to get rolling the show right now because Michael Kelch has got to head on down the highway and do something special. Michael Kelch, come on up here and deliver us a hillbilly emo song before you leave. Let's bring up Richard Starkey and Al Gall to play on this one real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. 
Also on wonderful Williamson County. It is, and everybody, everybody what listens to the Viva Nash Vegas radio show in Fairview. Yeah! Can you wave to your friends in Fairview right now? Yeah. Right, just, just one, I'll wait. How <laughs> about another game yeah, for the one and only Michael Couch? Yeah. Attention is not me as we try to figure out what's happening next. We'll have our upcoming guests get ready to proceed to the stage, but if you want to play a fast instrumental real quick to get things sort of uplifted. This is Al Gall, Mr. Dobro, and King of Richard Starkey, the king of the six string. How about a hand for them? Right. Hey, David Spaulding, why are you called the anonymous duck call? Because I blow a duck call. Can you blow a duck call? Okay, so our next guest after you all will be getting ready to come up on stage. But now, a beautiful instrumental from the one and only. The microphone is not on. That's called the, that's the instrumental. That's what the title is? I like you. A beautiful instrumental called The Microphone Is Not On. <laughs> Again, folks, this is live How, radio. Did you write this instrumental? Yeah, I did. That's right. <laughs> now it's Al Gall and Richard Starkey with The Microphone Is Not On. <laughs> There we go. Do 
After they do this song, they're going to do the microphone is too high. <laughs> One, two, three, four. These people know how to pick and how to sing, and they may even play the fiddle. I think they come from parts far away from here, but they'll describe that to us. And it's okay, because now we're all safe here in beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee. How about a big hand for the Viper Twins? Airport, maybe? Yeah. Well, New Jersey's not all Newark. There are countrysides to New Jersey, and that's where we came from. The Garden State. That's right. 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 Pam knows. Yep. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of Jersey country for you. Woo-hoo! Woo! Right. This is one of our songs called Higher.
That was a song we wrote in Jersey. And now for a nice, lovely country song that we wrote here in Nashville. <laughs> Something a little different. Thank Viva Nash Vegas. This place is awesome in Kimbrough's Cafe. Wave, you're on worldwide TV. Hello, hello world. <laughs> we're, on a, we're on world tour right now. <laughs> Alright, it's just a sweet little love song called Just Right.
notes that I'm sticking in here between behind the wonderful clap sign that was made by Ken Spooner. Let's clap for Ken Spooner. Okay, I can see that now. This is the part of our show that they are totally unprepared for. You know, this is the part of the show that we like to call questions and answers with David Spotted Jr. David Spotted Jr. is also an industrial spy, along with being a man of constant leisure. Sing along. He is a man. He's Davis Pauly Jr. He stays up all night long with broken speakers on his computer, but he can read lips while he's watching people perform and talk about their life. David, do you have any questions for the Pfeiffer Twins? Before we start, David, I've nice. got a question. Be nice. They're clients. Be oh, yeah. Nice. But wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Before we start, I have a question. I know everyone in the audience has been wondering. Do you know what question that is? Are you all twins? <laughs> that is the number one question we get, George. And We're yes, real twins. we are real twins. And not fraternal either. We are identical twins. Who don't look identical? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> if you're twins, why don't you have the same color hair? Uh, it's called hair dye. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, lots of it. And we're also yeah. near twins, because I'm a righty, and she's a lefty. Even though I play righty guitar. Well, we're going to be easy with you this morning, okay? Okay. Are you all kind of on tour right now? Is that true? We're, well, we were joking. We're, we're on tour, tour, but we do gig a lot. Yeah. yeah. We play around Nashville a lot, so we're always doing songwriters rounds, always writing new songs. We often play festivals in the summer. We're just everywhere. Long well, I, I had a request from the very past. Are you all single? Or? Ish. Ish. I'm not ish at all. I'm single. I'm ish. Right, I just started ish. dating somebody new. But I'm in a new, new relationship. We're seeing where it's going. Well, yeah. You got some yeah. Wires in the back, back so there. far, so good. Now, but, here, here's my question. You're from New Jersey. Did you ever meet the Sopranos? <laughs> you know what? Somebody I dated. Oh, no, wait. That wasn't James Gandolfini. Never mind. <laughs> she, her boyfriend is James. His name is James, but it's not James Gandolfini. Um, no, I've, I've never seen The Sopranos, but the mafia is real. It's out there, and it's it's, it's just normal. It's just there. Yeah. Lots of Italians in New Jersey. Great pizza as well. Lots of great pizza. <laughs> Our show must continue with no more questions from David Spawn Jr. How about a hand for David Spawn Jr. who will now disappear from the stage for security reasons? Move to the stage, please. Once again. The one and only, the Fiverr Twins. <laughs> Thank you, George. All right, we have one last song. Do our best. We're going to try to bring the house down on this one. And this song is called Down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope you like it. I don't know if I can do this anymore.
Charlie Piper twins, are y'all going to stick around for a little while, or are y'all heading on the bus? They're going to have some breakfast here at Kimbrough's. Has everybody had breakfast yet? No. Everyone will have breakfast before it's over. But now, another big hand for the one and only Piper twins. He's going to bring up our next special guest, who is Chef Michelle. And Davis Paul is going to recite this with me. We like to say, here comes the one and only Chef Michelle. Mm -hmm. Chef Michelle. Oh, Chef Michelle, <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing quite fine, thank you. Now, why do they call you Chef Michelle? You actually coined that. <laughs> right, and that's because you are the one who creates these wonderful breakfast and brunch here. I am, thank you. This is actually, it's like a labor of love. It is a labor of love. You've been awake since at least 3 o'clock this morning watching the winter water. <laughs> Just 4.30 this morning. 4.30. How about a hammer, Chef Michelle, for 4.30? Can you tell us, really quickly, quickly, tell us very nicely, what, or any way you want to, what do you have in the kitchen today? I have French apple tarts, that's with powdered sugar. Whoa. Are they good? Really good. Good, thank you. We made some Viva Nash hash and eggs. <laughs> and of course, biscuits and country gravy. How about a hand for Chef Michelle? <laughs> and you can see her in the kitchen right here at Gimbrose Cafe. Davis Father Jr. while William is introducing our next people up onto the stage, ushering up here, would you please tell us some brand new joke that you made up just this week? Well, I have no new joke, but I do have a Franklin trivia question. Everybody ready for this? What is this trivia question this week? The trivia question is, we have just lost our dear restaurant Dotson's, okay? That's not trivia, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, we need Dotson's. But the question is this, there was a Mr. and Miss Dotson, okay? There really was. What was Mrs. Dotson's first name? Clara. Clara. Raise your hand, who won? Right there. But you win nothing, because we've got nothing to go away. What do what does our contestant win, Davis Father? Nothing. We got nothing to give away, George. How about a free in-house appearance by the anonymous duck call? No, because a lady that wants a very good friend. <laughs> so that was a plant in the audience, is what you're saying. No, no <laughs> Would you please ask William Kevin Jenner what he's been up to? Well, he's got something to talk about. <laughs> First of all, we just have uh, the, the Piper Twins, and they have their debut CD that they special for. We have them here for you. Uh, while they're here, you can pick up your copy. You are one of the first people to get their debut CD. They're not free, so I just want to pick them up. So. William, where'd you go last Saturday night? Well, last Saturday night, we went to the Midnight Jamboree in Nashville. What got you down there? George Hamilton was hosted. All right, uh, George Hamilton was hosted at Midnight Jamboree. Nice. Now, it was fantastic. And now it looks like our next guest have set up. And originally from Arkansas. The next guest. Our next from guest are from Thompson Station. Yes, now Thompson Station is in Williamson County. It's not Franklin. But it is in wonderful Williamson County, Tennessee, where we all live. Franklin is the county seat, I guess, of Williamson County. Yes. How about a big hand for Williamson County, Tennessee? No. Now we're going to let William Cunnington, because this is Williamson County, they named it after you. If you would move your orange microphone closer to your face, at which time you will introduce our next people to the stage. Are you nervous, William? Yes, I'm nervous. Always nervous, William. But anyway, I am a priest of hell. A CD from our next guest for you guys to get today while they're here. And it is my distinct honor to welcome to the Fat Believe and Ash Ladies Radio Show, the Ham Family Band. All right. yeah.
Can I have a little mic from over here on the spot? Yeah. Right. We'll make this. Ham. We're the Ham Family Band. Woo! Yeah. 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 I do have a wife. No, she is not musical. Can we tell everybody to leave her alone? Don't ask her that question. She is a, a wonderful mom. Yeah. A beautiful wife. And we love having her around. Yeah. She's the other half of the reason we boys are up here. Tyler here is 19 years old. Parker is 17. Jackson, you can't make fun of him. You can't say to this kid back here, act your age, not your shoe size, because he's 15 and wears a size 16. <laughs> That's the first song I wrote with uh, these two fellas right here. And it was actually about Tyler's 1968 Cutlass that he drives. And uh, taking his girl to the prom a couple of years, oh, a year and a half ago, I don't know. almost a year ago. And uh, we thought we should write a song about that because it's such a cool looking car. And a plug, it's for sale. Oh. <laughs> his girl went away to college and it just cost too much gas to drive a 68 Cutlass down the town of Chattanooga. <laughs> Here's another original song called uh, Forever. And Tyler's going to take the lead on this too. I'll back out of this microphone.
We didn't move to Nashville for music. We moved here because my company moved me here. And then these boys started picking up instruments, and uh, we would go to a little uh, hole in the wall out in Leapers Fort, Tennessee, and play on a open mic night. And we weren't even playing together. The boys were playing all kinds of different instruments, and I'd just work with them on a song, and they'd get up and play. And uh, I taught these two guys harmony, and spent about six months with them just doing harmony, and they got it. And then uh, everything just started taking off. So yeah, we, are, we are glad to be here at Viva Nash Vegas. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I'm give a little shout out to Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie back there taking some pictures. So uh, I was uh, traveling in this little town called Sweetwater, Tennessee. It's about uh, 60 miles north of Chattanooga. Loved the little town. Thought it was. Pretty Americana, had some big porches with American flags and porch swings. I thought this is a cool place, so it deserved a song. So I brought it back, shared it with these two guys. They helped me finish it. So this is a song called Sweetwater, Tennessee. If you notice this little tiny bass that Tyler just picked up, it sounds just like an upright. It's a cool little addition that we, uh, a friend of ours, has borrowed recently. So if you close your eyes, you can actually hear an upright. Sweetwater, Tennessee. so much incredible music. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the guy's name that played first, but I sure did love his voice. Michael Kelsch. Michael Kelsch. Yeah. Michael Kelsch. Yeah. I love this guy. So uh, Jackson here, the youngest and the almost the tallest, I think we'll be sometime soon. So imagine we can even fit in here. Don't raise your instruments too high. Jackson's been singing with us for about a year. And uh, as the boys continue to sing, I slowly work myself out of a job, but that's okay. So Jackson's gonna take over and sing this song that I used to sing 
another original called <laughs> Seven Mile Road. You ready, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> this show is <laughs> You ready, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> His voice is a yeah. Used to be. Yeah. They changed. <laughs> I wish mine would change back. One, two.
George. Thank you, Viva Nash Vegas. Woo! That was a good plug, wasn't it? Thank you, Viva Nash Vegas. <laughs> we have fan, uh, friends and family listening in St. Louis and uh, Northwest Indiana up by Chicago. Hi, y'all. Ah. <laughs> it's nice. This is another Ham Family Band original. This song's called Walking yeah. Shoes.
of that fat tradition that's something in the water. William, what do you think about that? Man, this is great. I really enjoy it. Yeah, have you ever seen the ham family before? Uh, look at them last night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we want to thank Charlie Cajun. She's out there somewhere today. Miss Charlie. Unbelievable photographer and discoverer of talent. She's the one who brought the hand in hand to us. Charlie, thank you very much. You're wearing the hand for the future. Thank you so much, George and uh, Charlie and everybody that's associated with Beaver Nash Base. Uh, we're going to do one more. Song for you, another original that I co-wrote with these two fellas right here. Jackson says, if the song sells, he co-wrote it too. <laughs> this is, <laughs> we were sitting out in a little store, out in Leaper Sport playing, and uh, it's, uh, we were playing some bluegrass and whatever we do, we do a lot of eclectic mix thing. This guy was sitting across from us, and he goes, hey, my mama likes banjo and bluegrass music. He said, that's a good title for a song. And you can have it if you want it. So, like any good songwriter, I took it. And, uh, of course, these guys help me finish it because I just don't, I can't do the licks like this guy does. Parker's our, uh, Parker's our lead guitarist that we never had. He's a fiddle mailing kind of shooter. We also have a website too, so you can get a CD if you're out there watching instead of just sitting in here. Um, they're ten dollars online too, and it's hamfamilyband.com. So check that out. <laughs> Had to come up from that drop D song. Yeah. Mama likes banjo and bluegrass music. And I think after the uh, first course, you might get along with it and you can sing with us, right? How fast do you want it, guys? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Across the stage, what's happening here? We're out checking our pressures now. 
Oh, wait a minute. That's right. We used to take blood pressure at our historic birthdays, historic handy hardware, where you can still find all kinds of even as big as merchandise. But now, instead of checking blood pressure, at the hospitality desk, they also have a tire pressure gauge. And they're going to go out in the parking lot when you're not looking and check your tire pressure. Full service, folks. Full service. Hey, George, you know something I know. Come up to the microphone, baby. It's about don't be afraid. I'm not afraid anyway. Let's get Al Gall to start moving up here too, and Carol Antony while you talk. You know, what, you know what I know about the show so far today, George? I think I do. Every song, if I'm wrong, I'm telling you, but every song we've heard today, every song we've heard today is original. I'm right. We'll have to ask the Piper Twins. Piper Twins also, your songs were all original too, weren't you? I didn't know you were that deep of a thinker. I'm a student, George. I have a sixth grade education plus. Carol Ann, you ready? I reckon. All right, I'm getting off stage, so you all can do it. All right. Another. I tell you what, every time David Spaulding comes up on stage, I'm amazed at the candor and the splendor of his costume. Please turn around and let everyone see your jacket, David. Can you come back up here and walk across the stage with that? Get it on the camera. Look at the little TV screen, David. Now, there's David's ball. Now turn awesome. around, David, and show them what you did. Did you do that yourself? He made this jacket? No. Some other people were involved. This was one of the original jackets from the original shows. Did you used to wear that in the historic handy hardware with the birthplace of the Even Nice Vegas radio show? We wore it a few times. We sure did. We? Who's we? Uh, I wore it. Richard Starkey's wife wore it one time. Two or three people wore it during the show. Amazing. It was. Is it real? Yes. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what. You know who's coming up next, and a question I have to ask you is, could you please hold up something on the metal trays right by the soundboard? How about a hand for our sound man, Austin? <laughs> you know, one of the, the big features of the Viva Nash Vegas radio show, so it goes along with breakfast from Chef Michelle, is some cake, some gluten-free goodies. They were made by the cake lady and her sister. Remember to hold up the clap sign from time to time. Wait. Hey, wait. Clap sign. Okay. Yes, the cake lady. Is, the cake lady. She actually is going to present a very big show for us on March the seventh. But she will be out of town. But we're looking forward to that. We have Bernadette. Irish. We have the Irish entertainers. The Irish will be here. It's the invasion here at the Deep Nashville Radio Show. Now, speaking of red hair. We've got Carol Ann Turney. How about a big hand for her? She wants to sing a song before her sore throat takes over. But you'll notice that when she sings this song, you can almost see the pain in her eyes as she sings it because she has a, a raggedy throat. Is it true? Well, all week it's been. So I'm Talk on the microphone if you want walking. to. We're walking a thin line right now. A thin so line between what? It. You can do it. I could do it today. I couldn't do it yesterday. So everyone, put your hands together like this for Caroline. No, no clapping. Right. Save the clapping. Like the proof is in the singing. Ah. Going on a Caroline journey with one of your favorite songs that I can sing some harmony on, maybe too. And of course, Al Gall on the Dobro. How about Al Gall, Mr. Dobro? standard. Hope you enjoy it. This is not self-written by me. So I don't do much of that. Play before I say something really good. I was dancing with my darling.
just how much I have lost. Yes, I lost my little darling. I remember <laughs> Stop a song in the middle and wave your hands in the air. Well, it actually is not on purpose. I kind of have a strange tick. <laughs> but now we're going to bring somebody up here who's mighty, mighty special. This woman comes all the way from London, England. I'm going to take a hand for Barbara A. Stone. If I stop your song in the middle, Barbara, don't get mad. Let me see. I'm gonna, before you play, I'm going to try and stretch my hand out to somehow do what I normally do. I'll put the microphone on the ground, actually. But, Barbara, today you're going to play a song. Just move your mouth. I can't get the microphone to you. Say yes or no. Yes. She said yes. Barbara A. Stone is going to play a song. I'm going to come over there and do what I always do. Before she plays, I'd like to ask Barbara A. Stone a question. You are the greatest classical piano player that ever lived. And Amen. we are lucky. How about a hand? That's right. And you decided to come and, and play with us on this show. To you, this is no special stage, I know, but you make it a special stage for us. You are the one and only. The queen of the digital piano. And the classical piano and the tiny piano at Historic Canyon Hardware the historic birthplace of the Viva Las Vegas radio show. Visit us at www.vivanasvegas.com. Now, enough commercial is over here to ask you the question. Barbara A. Stone, might I kiss your hand? Sugar <laughs> <laughs> is not dead. The 
the Las Vegas radio show. And now I'm going to go over here and do what I traditionally do. I will lay on the floor in front of our pay stone. Just a touch of that, just a touch of the anything. One of those classical, just a touch of the classical piece that always makes me cry. We decided now that I would turn the piano really, really loud. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. It's going to be good. Catherine to come up here because she also comes from England and 
while Catherine is working on a song, we've got David Scott who's going to be putting some kind of things up here. Catherine Anderson may not be in the room right now. So instead, we may, no, oh, she is here. Catherine Anderson is making her second appearance here. She comes all the way from England. She's been in the Nashville television show. How about that? Wow. Yeah. And she's an award-winning songwriter over in England. I'll be moving microphones around. Come on up here, Catherine, and sing us a song. And did you have some breakfast? You haven't had any breakfast. No, that microphone doesn't. Can I have a stool? Is that right? You had no breakfast. Can I have a seat? Is that right? I'm going to get you a stool. Would you like a chair or a, a bar stool? A stool like that over right here. What? Let everybody know all tire pressures. Everybody's good. Okay, so now you have won some awards over in England. I'm going to lose now. Oh, thank you. So does that make it more difficult every time you get on stage? It's like when you're an Olympic champion, you have to best the last time. The awards you win, do they become burdens in a way because you feel the pressure once you've won awards? Um, I don't, I'm not I really don't sure I think about it like that. Uh -huh. I'm just like really happy to have got the opportunity to, you know, to win that and yeah. to be I, I, was, well. Well, I was trying to set you up for the question of, I don't know George, do you? And no, I don't I don't know George, do you? I, you're right. No, I don't feel the pressure. I'm going to put this in over here. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello. My name is Catherine Anderson. I'm from England. I'm visiting for a month. I'm right near the end of my trip, so I leave and I go home in four days. So I'm very sad about that, but I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much to George and to Viva Nash Vegas for having me. I'm going to start with a fairly new song, and um, this is called Stay, and it's basically about Nashville and how that I wish I could be here all the time, but it's not always the way it works. So here we go, this is called Stay.
Just wish I could stay. Can you stay right now and do another one? Yes, I can. All right, I'm going to have a so, uh, Thank you. A bit of backstory to this one. Um, a couple of years ago, I, I worked in a job in retail, and I hated it. Um, it was one of these things, like, I couldn't do something without getting something wrong or being blamed for something that went wrong. Um, and you would listen to the songs that would play over the speaker system and, you know, how they play music in jobs. Um, and I'd be sweeping the floor or something, and then I'd be like, why can't that be me actually singing on the, on the CD that's playing? So I wrote this next song, and it's called Wrong Side of the Radio. I hope you like it. Oh, play. 
because you are leaving in four days. And since that song, well, like all your songs, blows us away, can you just do one more for us? I know you're in a hurry. Yes, I can do one more. And do you have I wasn't problems? expecting this. I have to think on my feet now. <laughs> I'm trying to surprise you, but do you have some people watching us? Through that I do, yeah. I've got some people from the UK listening in. Where Hopefully my family's listening in. Sorry. What time are they in? Right now, it's probably about 6.45 in the evening. And that's when it's mean time. That's the Why do they call it mean time? They, they don't like time. I don't know. Oh, it's white time. <laughs> oh, let's all wave. It's just white time. Yeah. So is that some families out there? Now, they, what town are they in? They're near a town called Brighton. How do you write? Is that by the seaside? Oh, have you? He was there. He's been to Brighton? Oh, hey, that's, that's really cool. That is yes. the cake lady and her sister. They have been to Brighton. That's Tony Byworth. Do you know Tony Byworth? Is he in Brighton? I went, I went to Brighton with Tony Byworth. I thought Tony Byworth was in Network. You know Tony Byworth actually may be watching today. Hello, Tony. Oh, oh. Tony actually introduced me to you by way of that machine. Have you heard of the internet? I have. Yes, the internet is how we're broadcasting today at RadioNashVegas.com. And you can also watch these videos and more at NashVegas.tv on the internet. We just got the internet here in Franklin, but when I got the internet, Tony Bauer contacted me and said, you've got to talk to Cabernet. It it's also Sir Tony. What? It's Sir Tony. He's right. Forgive me. Tony is a Sir. Sir and Tony Bauer. That's right. Did you know Read him with respect. He is a Sir. <laughs> now back to our regularly scheduled program. The award winning singer, songwriter, and star of Nashville, the television show, the one and only, Katherine Anderson. Yes. Um, so I'm going to play, I played this last week, but I, this kind of caught me off guard. I didn't realize I was doing it, but I So I'm going to play the song I did last time I was here. So if you, if you were here last week or last a fortnight ago, then you might recognize this one. Um, so I wrote this about um, someone that I met a year and a half ago on one of my Nashville trips, and we became close really quickly. And um, we kind of, we were friends originally, but then it became a little bit more than that. And now he's my boyfriend, so. Yay! And um, I wrote this before we were dating, and this is called Just Another Country Song.
Do you have the CDs with me? I have CDs with me, yes. And uh, they're $5, and uh, you can get one of those from me at the end if you like. Or I have cards as well, and I have Facebook and Twitter and everything. So. Oh, wait, our question is for a quick conversion $5 US, what would that be in pound? That would be about three pounds. Wow. Yeah. So this a good deal? Three pounds. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so for that, you could actually get a good like fish and chips for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Now, do you do you like magic? I love magic. Do we need a volunteer for this? No, sir. No. no. But can she stand by and watch? She's most certainly. Okay, you're going to get a ringside side seat because this man who comes up next, his name is David Scott. He does magic. And he's that great. makes him. All right. The magic man! He's David Scott. David, show the captain where to sit and get a ring inside seat. David, you're over here. Need to set up just briefly, so bear with me. That's fine. Well, it looks like I can to see. David, tell us something. Well, George, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, this is an illusion, and it's actually going to be beautiful background music played by Miss Barbara Stone. Is there a microphone during this illusion that you can talk into? Mine works better than yours. <laughs> what about this? You said what? Barbara Stone is going to be playing the accompanying music. Just to kind of set this up, I don't normally do silent pieces, but I'm working on a big show for May, and this is a, a kind of work in progress, so if you really like it, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know that you really liked it anyway. Just lie to me. My wife does it all the time, so it's okay. So, Barbara, thank you. Hang on. here at Misfits, who is also a writer of poems. And this man played football with Jerry Clower down there in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Yes, hey! The just don't get no better than the oh, Diva Nash Figures radio show, and the cake lady and her sister say so. So if they say it's so, it's so. It's so. But you know what I mean? If Harold says it's so, it's so. Bob Coleman, 
Are you ready to throw down one of those classic things you've written? Now, he is, he's a writer. Yes, Lord. Get ready. And remember, after this, we'll all be singing Crawdad Hole. In the key of G, which could you use a fiddle? Maybe a banjo, you never really know. The one and only, Bob Coleman. play a football with Jerry Clough, I'll play it against him. Yeah. He said the first football game he ever saw, he played in it. Uh, he was a good friend of mine from Yadu City, Mississippi. And uh, one day I picked up a little rock in the flower bed. And I asked the good Lord, I said, Lord, what that little old rock mean? And as fast as I could write, this is what came out. It said, look around and you'll see the gifts of God are always free. You may know what they inspire. I ask a stone and let it try to tell you what it's meant to be. The stones tell you what one told me. This simple rock is very plain, but its bend is not in vain. If it were gold or a priceless stone, it wouldn't have meaning to me alone. And if it weren't great in a man, I wouldn't find one in all the land. What could it mean to me? I know I saw it on the ground below, picked it up, wondering why I did not just pass it by. A souvenir from my own land. And I held it in my hand, drawing back to cast away, but I could not when I heard it say, There's life in all that God has made. Born when this foundation was laid, the earth was formed by him alone. He made you man, but me, a stone. It was then that I was sent to spend my life in discontent. While everyone had passed me by, they didn't care, even try. They looked for precious rocks instead and really thought that I was dead. But you, my friend, have leaned so low to pick me up that I will show you just what I was meant to be. So write this down where well, all may see. This poem you write is my own cry to tell some people just to try to do like you by looking low. The minds will then begin to grow. What does this stone mean, my friend? The thoughts I have will never end. What does it mean to those who care? Just ask God. He put it there. So Bob, now you have a, an art, art place over at the factory in Frankfurt. Right, right at the factory. And uh, what hours are you there? Uh, from Monday through uh, Friday. Monday through Friday, and you do all kinds of word pictures. Bob started out as a sign painter. Right. And uh, well, one of the things, was just if you can real quick, the story you had about your teacher, and uh, she said, can you write a poem? Okay, well, I'll tell you what happened. I stuttered all my life. I couldn't say my name. One time I picked up a boy hitchhiking. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Where, where you want to get out? He said, raw, 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 raw. <laughs> so I go back and I say, whoa, 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 where you want to get out? He said, raw, 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 raw. We went five miles past where he wanted to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in high school, my junior year, I failed English three twice. I couldn't give an old book report. I went to summer school, had to think it again, still couldn't get it. And uh, of course, it's good to stutter when you hadn't read the book, you know. But the senior year, I had to write a poem, and I'd never written a poem in my life. And an old boy in study hall said, Bob, you got your, Robert, you got your poem? I said, no, I don't have it. He said, well, you know what Miss Wyndham said? You can't graduate, I graduate with two Englishes. You gotta have three. I said, well, I never wrote a poem. I don't know anything about writing a poem. He said, well, here's a title in the book, How Tommy Saved the Day. Oh, man. Here's that poem, just that fast. And Tommy was a little water boy, and all he was good for was to hold that ball for a field goal, or extra point. So, I got in class, all the others had two liners. She said, Robert Ellis, my teacher called me, Robert Ellis Coleman. Robert Ellis, you got your point? Yes, ma'am. I smiled, happy. She didn't believe it. She said, well, let's hear it. Uh, Tommy saved the day. Now, we were playing this little town of Drew, Mississippi. That's where the Mannings came from. Drew, Mississippi. Drew, Mississippi. That's where the Archie Manning, Eli, and their family. Of course, they weren't even born back in 1946. <laughs> but anyway, this was the poem, How Tommy Saved the Day. The night was cold and rainy there, and the crowd was on its feet, and everyone was tense and tight. 
we had Drew to beat. The home team was in the huddle with a minute left to play when out on the field came a figure. Could little Tommy save the day? Now the signals were changed. A place kick was called. The team had plenty of pep in the center, snapped the ball. Little Tommy would be holding on the 20-yard line. The scoreboard favored Drew, which read 12 to 9. If the field goal was made, the game would be tied. But a touchdown would have the game won. So when Tommy got hold of the ball, he, he decided he'd try to run. He started off flowing fast. He cut outside left end. He had only four men to pass before his team could win. He spin, he turned, he ran like, well, he ran on just the same. And everyone is proud of him now because Ruval won the game. Now those kids in class jumped up and they screamed and hollered and clapped. The teacher said, shut up, shut up. You didn't write that. The old boy in study hall said, yes, ma'am, I watched him write it 15 minutes ago. No, he couldn't do that old dummy Robert Edison. <laughs> she gave me a zero. Aww. And I found the difference between pride and integrity. Pride, you're trying to look good. Integrity, she gave me a thousand zeros. She could never take that poem away. Yay! Yeah! Yeah! You said, then you went, you saw her name in the phone book one day, many, many years later. And oh, yes. Went to her. No, I'll tell you what. Next to the last day of school, we had a senior party, and she was there at the party. <clears throat> and she said, now, Robert Ellis, you turn in seven handwritten book reports tomorrow, and I'll let you graduate. I turned in seven handwritten book reports. Seven different handwritings. <laughs> <laughs> she let me graduate. Well, I saw her 60 years later. My wife and I went to see her in a nursing home. And little town of Greenville, Mississippi. <clears throat> I said, Miss Wyndham, yes, this is Robert Ellis. Do you remember me? Oh, Robert Ellis, how could I ever forget you? <laughs> I said, I'm in town, I wanna to come see you. So she said, please do. I wanna open and kiss her and give her a copy of my book, Raise the Blight. It's got 76 poems that I wrote since I wrote the stone. Wow. And I started reciting how Tommy saved the day, hoping she might remember it and let me graduate. <laughs> well, after two weeks, I called her up. Miss Wyndham, how do you like my poems? Well, Robert Ellis, how do you think I like your poems? I said, listen, woman. I've been trying for 60 years to get a passing grade out of you. She said, I loved them. So I guess I passed. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, you talk about the book. You got those also at your art shop in the factory? Yeah, I got my art at Linda, Linda's. And I both have an art gallery and studio there. London's an artist and poet just like me. And um, that's the way I do uh, What I've been doing for two months, I've been doing calligraphy and giving it away. And people come in, everybody else is trying to sell something. Hey, hey, come here. I'll do your name in calligraphy. It won't cost a thing. And I've been doing that for two months. And everybody loves to have the kids and the grandkids, their names and everything. But y'all come see us down at the factory. Well, right down there near Liberty Hall. Yeah, yeah, on the yeah. 12 S it's called that, that section there. Be, be glad to have you. Well, go on down there and see the painting, the lovely painting and writing. We'll talk to you. You will never have such a good time as you'll have by home. Very, very wonderful. And thank you for coming to our show today. We're going to try to get you back again sometime real soon because you've got soul. Oh. You know. <laughs> That's the good Lord. Yeah. Well, we've come to the beautiful part of our show, a part that is probably your own place. This is the part where we ask everybody if they want to and if they're brave enough to come up and sing a heap and help in a crawdad hole with this. Many people come to the show just for the crawdad hole. David Spalding, come up here and say something funny before we start. Wait a minute. You get a line and I'll get a pole, honey. And y'all say, I'll come up on stage. Honey, 
Can I hear you? You get a line, and I'll get a pole, babe. You get a line, and I'll get a pole, and we'll go down to the crawdad hole. Honey, baby, mine. With enthusiasm. I'll go, I'll go on up here, and you will be taking from time to time that solo right over there. Now get on the camera, because when you're a camera person, a wonderful cameraman, and my lovely wife, they are the same person, actually. We just have fun calling her the cameraman. We're going to try to get everyone on the camera, including Al Gaw. Oh, that was Catherine Edison. You never know who you'll bump into at the Viva Las Vegas radio show. Now, everybody try to squeeze in. I'll go over here with Carol Ann and risk getting a sore throat. I don't want a sore throat. I don't want a sore throat. So, you all act like you're singing. There's Richard Starkey. I think he's on there. So, everyone lean in as much as you can as we move over here. There. Now, everybody, come on in closer. Look at the TV camera. If that can't see you, then you can't see it or something. Are you ready for Crawdad at Home? Yeah, we're ready. Well, here we go. Yeah, you get Oh, I get it. It's a joke. Thank y'all very much. We'll see you. I'll go.